Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And very good welcome to all I'm Dr. Fahim, coordinator for the final year project for degree programs So today I'm going to cover on the remaining part of your PSM1 report In which proposed design section, expected outcome and conclusion Okay, proposed design. What do you mean by proposed design? Proposed design means the design of your system or your proposed solution. Okay, everybody has different projects. So, there must be a design or blueprint that you must describe upon your proposed solution. So, in order to describe your design, it can be expressed in many, many ways. But it always depends on the suitability of your system. The very least, the most basic is flowchart, and some systems requires architectures, and is further been detailed down in the algorithm. Graphic students may use storyboard, and some of you may describe the data set they use. Okay, so you have to remember that for software engineering students, they have extra document to write, which is software requirement specification and software, des software design description document so here today in this colloquium i'm going to cover two basic um, ways of describing the proposed design okay flowchart everybody knows what is flowchart so basically flowchart um, describes the flow of the system or flow of the modules in which from the start until the end so it is it is the most basic way in explaining your solution flow or your program flow and apart from that flowchart can be used to describe your data flow or your system flow so data flow we can refer as data flow diagram in which we derive from context diagram to data flow diagram and another way of uh, describing the proposed uh, design is algorithms. Some of the projects uh, may use algorithms to enhance or to be developed. Therefore, how you're going to explain your proposed design? You can use the you can use the flowchart, and then furthermore explain it using the algorithm. So basically, algorithm is step by step of execution of your proposed work. So it is described in the form of pseudo code. I believe many of you already learned sudo coach so basically if you see the figure on the right you can see the first thing being described is the input that means for instance let's say in this case uh, we, are, we are trying to process a java file so we declare java application as j1 the source file as s1 until sn so we have to declare all the elements input and output and also the rules that are being used here and then the second part is the step by step execution in which you have to write the number the first step what it does the second step what it does so this is basically partial of your uh, program being written but in more in a half natural and half scientific way so I believe uh, you already learned this so you can apply this in your project okay the next section is hardware and software specification in case for software engineering students you have to write down this in your SRS so basically it is about the hardware that you use in your project and the software that you use in your project I'm gonna remind you using Microsoft Word to write your document or using your printer to print your document is not considered as hardware or software you're gonna use in your project it expect it's this part of section is specifically on the hardware and software you use to develop your solution. If it's an IoT project, then you have to re you have to explain all the hardware that's involved. That means the wiring, the microcontroller, and everything. And if it's software, then you have to you have to describe the software you use for development of the interface, the development of the logic, the development of the database. So here I can give you an example, if you notice, you create a table, it's far more easier to use table. And then, okay, first you put the name, 
okay in this case I'm going to choose the software which is NetBeans so you put the name there NetBeans and then you uh, describe the version which is 8.2 and then you have to mention the type so if it's, if it's a software then you write the uh, software and then you describe the software okay that means it's an integrated development environment IDE for Java application development and then you have to the last column you have to mention what's the purpose is being used in your system in this case is to develop the interface and logic of the developed system okay same case if you come for Arduino Uno many of you use this if you're using microcontroller or IoT projects so how you describe the hardware is very simple Arduino Uno as the name version 5.1 type hardware and software hardware or software why hardware and software the thing is it's a hardware and it has its own module that we can actually uh, do the setting so you have to mention the hardware and also software and then you have to describe what is Arduino Uno in this case is is programmed using the IDE software or our integrated development environment common to all our bots and running both online and offline and then the purpose of use in your project is to develop the main controller of the system now the last section which is the expected outcome so basically here you need to describe what do you expect as an outcome for your project so one way is you can describe the testing strategy for this project in which testing that will be done on your proposed solution let's say for systems you can say you want to do UAT in which in this case we mean as user acceptance test so in the UAT you have to explain in this section how it will be done who are the users and the tools that you use and also further describe how you do the test plan okay and also you can also describe expected result in one or two paragraph okay if you have early result then can describe in this section and then the last part is conclusion so conclusion is meant to conclude your work that means you have to reflect on your proposed work you can start by okay describing a little bit on the domain in two or three sentence and then followed by the problem and then followed by the existing solution and you describe your proposed solution and then the outcome in one or two sentences if you already completed this part for network students and also graphic students you already completed your PSM1 report okay the next part is covering the SRS which is software requirement specification document and also software design description document okay uh, this is specifically for software engineering students okay first these are the elements that you need in your SRS before we go through the elements I already uploaded the template that means you can customize the template based on the elements that you feel is relevant to your project okay first foremost for con for a SRS document you need the context diagram so context diagram is basically the interaction of user with the system and what flows through it is the data and then the next element you may need is DFD DFD is data flow diagram so this is the expansion from the context diagram in which you can see the sub modules you can see the data stores and then you can see the whole system modules inside there and then once you have DFT you need the use case diagram and description that means you have to show the overall use case diagram and then later on you have to describe the use cases based on the use case, use case diagram in your system so for use case description it's essential for you to have the basic flow and then you can consider adding alternate flow so moving on from the use case okay you have to create your sequence diagram so once you have the step-by-step -step basic flow you will convert the basic flow into sequence diagram that means you have to identify 
the objects and also you have to identify the sequence that means you will determine your functions there and then the functions that related to the object and how it flows until you complete the specific specific sequence for instance let's say for a login module okay you need the user let's say the user is a manager and then the one that you develop the system that you are developing is let's say inventory management system the manager wants to log in into the system so you already identified okay the user and then you have the interface and let's say if you're implementing the MVC then you have the controller and then you have the model okay please don't be confused with physical design and logical design please refer back to the notes of your subjects in software design workshop okay now what you do is from the manager you will communicate to the interface and then from the interface you will communicate to the controller and then from the controller you will communicate to the uh, model so you have to know what are the functions and what are the parameters being passed around through these functions and then what's the outcome when it's passed through the system that means through the interface and what is displayed to the manager so this is one simple um, description on sequence diagram and then apart from that after the sequence diagram you need the interface design so interface design you can do it in two ways one is sketch another one is colored interface remember this is design okay not the final outcome of the interface so therefore my suggestion is for you to use sketch that means it's a black and white drawing so the idea is to know the position the location of the labels the text box and the buttons and the arrangement of it in an interface okay and then if you're using if you feel that it needs to be colored then you add some colors to it so there are many tools they can use okay for instance paint paint 3d or you can even use the most sophisticated adobe xd or you can e even use your microsoft word to draw your um, interface and the final element is the hardware and software specification in which i already explained previously for software engineering students please put that table here okay so what happens the elements that you don't put at the top you just mentioned please refer to the software requirement specification document okay don't put it in a redundant format and for the use cases the sequence and the dfd context all of this diagram you already learned throughout your degree so i believe you can understand and come up with the good diagrams for your project now software design description document this is basically a document that describes um, the implementation of the proposed solution okay there are three important elements that you need to put inside this SDD document the first is the architecture or the blueprint every solution regardless whether it's a system if it's an algorithm everything has a design of it so you put the design here and you describe the design here okay and then the next element is class diagram in which you already developed your sequence diagram in SRS so you convert the sequence diagram into class diagram okay class diagram will depict all the attributes all the functions that is related to the object and how the object interacts with another object so i believe you already learned this in software design workshop class so please make sure you utilize your knowledge and skills to develop your class diagram and then later on you need to describe in detail your algorithm or your pseudo code that means you already learned in software design workshop class on developing a table that has the input output and the process okay so you have to describe it in the form of either algorithm or pseudo code i hope you can um, do this because it takes a lot of time so you have to be very um, critical in your timing okay that's the all for the description of the PSM1 report I hope everybody already understand and 
for the SDD and SRS, I will upload the template. The template is the front page, the the uh, body part which has the section and also the um, final page. So I will upload for both of it and I will try to construct based on the elements and you can refer it inside Kalam. Okay, that's all from me. Um, thank you for listening and see you again. Bye.